In this next scene, we get an example of what John Truby in Anatomy of Story says is the core of good traumatic storytelling, which is to put the characters diametrically opposed to one another based on their values and perspectives on the world. Ultimately, a protagonist and an antagonist of a story are battling not for who is stronger on a superficial level, but for whose worldview is correct, as both believe they are right in their own ways, as every character sees themselves as the hero of their own story. Nobody thinks they are bad, and in Philip K. Dick's story, it's never clear who is good and who is bad. All the characters ride the gray line between the two. John, just like the audience, at this point in the film, is completely convinced of the validity of pre-crime as an effective measure against murder, and for his own reasons that are shown later in the film, we can understand why. However, John looks immediately unsympathetic to the audience when we hear him regard the precogs as not being human. His worldview then is skewed. He is willing to sacrifice the lives of the precogs and have them live as slaves for what he considers to be the moral good of the general population. The set design also implies this separation, as there is a wall that separates the detectives from the precogs that allows them to literally look down on them as if they are not human. It's only by separating the two groups of people that John and his crew can view them as objects or filtration systems rather than humans and gives them the moral distance to be comfortable with what is essentially child abuse, something that will be brought up later in the film. Danny, on the other hand, is a former seminary student and carries an undescript pendant that he kisses many times throughout the film and serves as a meditation device for him. The first impression we get of him is that he comes across as an up-and-comer in politics who is trying to take John's job. However, after he sees the precogs in person, we get a different sense about him and his worldviews and thus his motives. Upon being introduced to the precogs, he mentions that science has stolen most of our miracles and that the precogs give hope of something beyond this physical world. To Danny, being a former seminary student, he is likely to look at this as not only a brash violation of human rights, but a crime against God and all of creation. The idea that science has stolen our miracles and that man has fallen into a despirited state, one where the wicked are called good and the good are called insane, is something that is another common theme in Philip's work. In Blade Runner and Minority Report, we see in both of these worlds that they have fallen into a state of pure commercialism. There are no sacred spaces or places left. Everything is available for rent or sale, even the air that people breathe. Even religion itself is up for sale, and Danny makes mention of this directly in his next quote when he says the power was always with the priests, even if they had to invent the oracle. This is his direct jab at pre-crime itself, but also an interesting comment from someone who is a seminary student. Perhaps after losing his father due to murder in front of a church, he lost his faith, only to regain it stronger in his adulthood. John Truby in Anatomy of Story mentions that the, the protagonist and the antagonist should be mere reflections of one another. When we look at John and Danny from this perspective, we see they both lost someone close to them. But whereas John has seemed to put his faith into pre-crime, Danny perhaps puts his faith into a higher power. The religious symbolism doesn't stop there though. As we see the cops themselves refer to the room the pre-cops are kept in as the temple. It's interesting to note that the design of the room itself is meant to invoke a religious feeling as the circular shape of the photon bath that holds the precogs emanates a strong ambient light, creates dramatic lighting for the actors. There is also three precogs. The number three symbolizing wholeness or completeness in religious iconography, such as in Christianity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the three jewels of Buddhism. There is quite an in-depth symbology behind the number three and why it is present in religion, but that is beyond the scope of this video. However, for those interested, I've put in the cards above a video from Max Durrett covering this topic for those that are interested. And I've also done an interview with Max that you can find on this channel as well. 
and I'll put that link in the description box below. Now, uh, just for a quick commercial break before getting to the next part, uh, a message from our sponsors, which is me. As I've mentioned here in this video series and in my previous Blade Runner video series, I am currently adapting a series of comics based on the short stories of Philip K. Dick, who is the original writer of Minority Report and Blade Runner. If you're a fan of these films, then I think you'll find these comics to be pretty entertaining. Uh, and I have a third one that I'm actually about to release. The first two issues are for free in the description box below. If you're interested, I would ask that you read the comics and leave a review or a comment letting me know what you think about the comic. And make sure to like and subscribe for more updates on the next issue. And stay tuned for next Saturday for the next Minority Report analysis. Thanks guys, and have a great day.